Grab your school supplies and your sample bottles because the DEQ is taking you back to school. In this video, we're gonna show you how to conduct lead and copper investigation samples. So what do you need? You need your bottles, your gloves, paperwork, and a lunchbox would be handy. Now let's go sample. With proper training, anyone can collect lead and copper samples. You don't need a certified operator. However, samples should be collected in a specific way in order to give you the best results. For investigative sampling, use 250 milliliter bottles like these. These are different than the bottles you use for compliance sampling. The bottle should be labeled with the ID number like this one. 110 is the room number, WC is for water cooler, and P1 is the first draw sample. Also, your laboratory form should be pre-filled as much as possible. Complete every line except for the time. You'll fill that in after you collect the sample. At this point, you should already know the flow of cold water in the school building and identify drinking water sample locations. Let's head over to the water cooler. Water cooler, drinking water fountain, bubbler, it's all the same, but the important thing is that all lead and copper samples must be the first draw out of the tap. If you find out that any water has been used in the building within the last eight hours, don't sample. Also, if the water has sat stagnant in the building unused for more than 18 hours, don't sample because you won't get reliable results. Now that we're here, the first thing we need to do is check to make sure we're at the right sample location. That looks good. Now to collect the sample, first remove the cap, hold the bottle in position so that you can collect that first draw, and fill it all the way up to the neck, leaving a little bit of room so that the lab can add some preservative. Secure the cap, and now check to make sure the sample ID on the bottle matches the sample ID on the form. Right in the time, Be sure to keep the paperwork with the sample bottle by folding it like so, putting it around the bottle and attaching it with, with the rubber band. Let's head to the next location. Here at this next location, we're going to collect the sample similarly to how we collected the first one at the water cooler. However, we got a kitchen sink, so we got to make sure we collect only the cold water side. We're going to fill it up to the neck again, cap it securely put the paperwork with it, and now let's move on to do some more sampling. Now that all the sampling is collected, the only thing left to do is to ship them to the lab. Lead and copper must be tested at the lab within 14 days if they are not properly preserved. So make sure you don't wait long to ship them or drive them to the lab. Well, that's all we have time for today. If you have any questions, you can contact Holly Golke at the number or address listed here. Class dismissed.